Hello, I'm Veronica Keck and I'm working in the team Cross-Cultural Survey Methods at Gezi's Leibniz Institute for the Social Science in the ESS and SHOCK projects. Today, I would like to present to you preliminary results of a series of experiments in which translators incorporated machine translation for the translation of questionnaires that might be used in international studies. Today, we will talk about the Social Science and Humanities Open Cloud or SHOCK machine translation study within this project. The focus of today's presentation will be on usability of machine translation in the context of questionnaire translation from a user-centered perspective, concept, research questions, some findings and conclusions. Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud is a project funded by the EU Framework Program Horizon 2020 and unites 45 partner organizations in developing the social sciences and humanities area of the European Open Science Cloud. The, within this project, we have conducted a machine translation study. Gezes and UPF are working on applying computer-assisted translation tools in social surveys by using machine translation to translate survey questions. Our machine translation study is based on the trapped model that many of you are familiar with. We are focusing on the first TRA steps where double translation is done independently by two persons, two human translators, and afterwards their versions are discussed in a review team. We have adapted this TRA model and introduced machine translation at the human translation step that you can see here. We make use of machine translation and post-editing, that is correction of machine translation, at the translation stage to obtain evidence on the potential for employing machine translation for survey translations. We assume machine translation may save time and costs while maintaining good text quality, but this is to be tested. Our experimental design looks as follows in detail. In the baseline group, at the step translation, two translators performing their translation task and three people at the step review discussing those two parallel translations and deciding on the one target translation version. There are 40 items from ESS and EVS questionnaires to work on for each group. The two experimental groups have integrated machine translation and post-editing in their process. Post-editing involves the correction of machine translation output to ensure that it meets a level of quality discussed in advance. Full post-editing aims at making the text as if it was translated by a human. Light post-editing aims at making the output simply understandable. We have three teams for English-German and English-Russian with 18 persons in total. Here is an example of post-editing. In the last 12 months, um, that is since, for example, March 2021, were you ever unable to get a medical consultation or the treatment you need for any of the reasons listed on this card? And one of the reasons is could not take the time of work. And this is our source text for translation. The machine translated text reads Ich konnte mir keine Zeit für die Arbeit nehmen or the back translation would be something like I could not take time for work. As you can see this is a total mistranslation and on the full and post editing that you can see here this is the full and this is the light post editing. The post editor corrected a lot in order to um, convey the meaning and to uh, render the meaning of the source text. And the light post editor um, make, made a few changes in order to uh, have the same meaning that uh, we have in the source text. Today, I'm focusing on the usability of machine translation in the context of questionnaire translation from a user-centered perspective. I am zooming in to the translation step T of the uh, trapped model to measure the usability of machine translation. 
since usability is one of the key factors for increasing the adoption of machine translation. My approach is a descriptive analysis, and the goal is to present preliminary results for usability of machine translation. Usability can be defined as follows. It is an extent to which a system, product, or service can be used by specified users to achieve specified goals with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction in a specified context of use. Thus, usability will be measured by the three dimensions, effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction. My research questions are the following. Does the usage of machine translation text increase the efficiency of the translated process? translation process, efficiency will be evaluated by comparison of temporal effort needed to produce a text from a translator and a post-editor perspective. The second question is, can machine translated text be used effectively? Effectiveness uh, will be measured by analysis of the error produced by a machine engine, and those error categories were selected by post-editors. The third question is, how satisfied are post-editors with the machine-translated text? Are there any changes in the participants' attitude towards uh, machine translation before and after the use of machine-translated text? Satisfaction will be captured by a pre- and post-task questionnaire. The first dimension I'm presenting is efficiency. Efficiency is the resources used in relation to the results achieved. One of the resources may include time. The time used in this time um, expended in attempting to achieve a goal. So as you can see on the left side of this slide, in the light blue and light green box plots, uh, show the average time spent on post-editing of machine translated text and the time spent on the translation from scratch. It is quite the same. This suggests that the use of machine translated text could not be efficient. However, if we take a look on the right side, here you can see the full and the light post-editing. And there is a significant difference between the time spent on the full and the light post-editing task with 7 and 3.6 hours accordingly. This finding might suggest that the use of machine translated text could be efficient for the light post-editing. In general, post-editing time is likely higher in our experiment than usually because our post-editors also had to select error types and severity levels, which does not occur in the usual use of machine translation. If we take a look at the efficiency across languages, then we see uh, the median for the time spent on the Russian translation is about seven hours, and post-editing is about six hours, and it's almost the same. The difference in translation and post-editing for German is a bit different. It's larger, six hours and four and a half hours respectively. So on the right side in green, you also can see that the Russian and German full post editors spend the same amount of time on editing machine translated text. The overall higher time spent for Russian translation and post editing than for German suggests a tendency to a language dependency. The use of machine translated text could be efficient because less time is needed for light post editing than for human translation if the goal is to produce a so-called good enough translation as basis for future work. The second dimension I'm presenting is effectiveness. Two major character characteristics of effectiveness are accuracy and completeness. Effectiveness is measured by analysis of the errors produced by a machine engine. The task was for post-editors not only to edit and correct the machine translations, but also to select error categories. The graphic on the left side shows the distribution of total error numbers. As you can see, the total um, number of errors assigned by the Russian post-editors with 278 errors is higher than the total number of errors assigned by the German post-editors. The graphic shows the overall distribution of error categories assigned by all post-editors.
The most chosen error category is translation with 196 errors that includes semantics and accuracy. This style with 144 errors that includes also fluency. Language quality with 70 errors includes grammar, syntax, punctuation. Terminology uh, with 62 that also includes consistency and tags with the formatting. The overview of this graphic shows that light post editors completed their task uh, of correcting um, machine translated output correctly because they assigned less errors. The post editors were instructed to assign severity levels for the chosen error categories where major level of severity means that the translation completely changes the meaning, likely misleads the respondent. Minor errors may affect the respondent's comprehension of translated text. And neutral er errors include those that might make the translation a bit harder to understand, but ultimately do not stop the respondent from overall understanding and using the translation in terms of measurement goal. The most often chosen severity for error categories is neutral, followed by minor and major. The distribution of error categories shows somewhat comparable picture for language conditions. The German post editors have assigned translation error category as the most frequent one, followed by style and language quality. The Russian post editors have chosen style and the most frequent error followed by terminology and language quality. The use of machine translated text could not be effective due to a significant lack of quality of the machine translated text. Um, the third dimension of usability I am presenting is satisfaction. Satisfaction is the extent to which the user's physical, cognitive and emotional responses that results from the use of a system, product or service meet users' needs and expectations. Prior to the post-editing task and after the task, four participants doing the post-editing received a pre- and post-task questionnaires. From each of those questionnaires, seven topics were selected that described the overall satisfaction. We received 28 answers from the pre- and post-task questionnaires in total. Topics included um, productivity, quality, usefulness, effort, enjoyment and use. As shown by the evaluation of the pre-task questionnaire, the overall satisfaction of participants was rather high prior to the post-editing task. The post-task um, questionnaires has shown a change in the attitude towards machine translation with regards to the effort needed uh, for correction of uh, machine translate translation and expected enjoyment of post-editing task. The overall satisfaction has increased. The rather negative responses about the expected quality uh, stayed rather negative after the task. The question of the pre and post test questionnaires included the following. What do you think about machine translation quality in general that, that is a pre-task questionnaire? What, what was the machine translated text of high or of poor quality? And the answer was, after the task, cultural context needs to be taken into consideration. It determines a choice of wording that fits best. Machine translation did not distinguish between items and interview instructions sometimes did not distinguish between verbs and nouns, between one as a number and as a pronoun, please was omitted and so on and so on. The post-task questionnaire has shown a small change in the attitude toward machine translation with regards to the effort needed for correction of uh, machine translation. After the post-editing task, almost every participant stated that it was easy to correct the machine translation text, but still provided some comments with regards to uh, the not satisfying quality of machine translation for some text parts. So, as we can see, the um, answer from the post questioner is, the true answer is um, that generally it is easy to post edit, yet there were some moments when the post editing made me think very 
thoroughly about translation options. The post-task questionnaire has shown a slight change in the attitude towards machine translation with regards to the enjoyment of post-editing task. The expected enjoyment was rather negative in comparison to the actual enjoyment of the post-editing, but again with further remarks to the quality of some items, text parts, um, for which machine translation did not provide any good solutions. So the uh, answer, one of the answers after the post-editing task was, on the one hand, I liked the quality of the machine translated text. On the other hand, I also enjoyed that I could still contribute to the quality of the translation. So overall, we can say that the use of machine translated text could be satisfying. Of course, we have some limitations that we need to um, point out. Different participants have been doing translation and post-editing respectively, thus we cannot compare efficiency within persons. It is not clear yet whether the selected error categories, severity levels are assigned correctly. This is to be determined by further detailed analysis. Experimental data prevent generalization but pave the way for future research and further analysis steps will tell us uh, more about the effect on the overall results. The overall conclusion for these three dimensions of usability, effectiveness, efficiency and satisfaction is as follows. The use of machine translated text could be efficient because less time is needed for light post editing than for human translation but not effective due to a significant lack of quality of the machine translated text. However, the acceptable quality of machine translated text could be defined as a good enough quality as a basis for post editing and overall satisfaction with machine translation and the post editing task was rather positive and even increased with the project experience. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward to the further discussion.